Hey guys, it is Saturday, um, 8 a.m. And uh, this this episode is going to be about Bitcoin and taxes and tax scenarios. Um, Bitcoin's, by the way, at 60, just under 67,000. And, uh, you know, I put this thing out in the Kelly criterion, and it, a lot of people said, well, it doesn't include taxes. And I, it doesn't. And I took another very close look and mom did some tax modeling. And I want to share some of the results. Um, but, you know, before I do that, I'd just like to say, you know, tax planning is something that a lot of people don't think of. Uh, especially traders. They're just like, I want to buy, I want to sell, I've got this going down, I want to sell. Um, now, if you're doing anything under a year, you're going to be you're going to be in the ordinary income tax zone, which means you know fifty percent uh, kind of tax rates, um, and it's really hard to make money when the government's taking half of every gain you're you're making. So you really got to push that thing out into the long term capital gains tax rates, and that really means that whatever you do, you're not you shouldn't do it more than once a year, um, and. Uh, so that's the first rule. But now let's take a little bit closer look at um, kind of some some scenarios using the power laws and sort of some rebalancing. Um, so let's go to this Google Sheets here. Okay. So what I have here on this Google Sheets is uh, I have um, a Bitcoin price, which I put today. And I'm just basically modeling out from kind of the power law, the trend line here, right? So this is the trend line. Now we know we, we don't just follow the trend line, we go up, we go down. And we'll take a look at that in a second, right? But I've modeled in capital gains tax rate, um, and uh, I'm, I'm using a sort of starting position of a million dollars. If you don't have a million dollars, you can put whatever you have, ten thousand, a hundred thousand dollars, whatever it is. If you have more than a million dollars, you obviously can you can put it in. I also put in a tax basis on your million dollars. Um, you know, a lot of us have have Bitcoin already. That's that's in pretty good uh, tax basis. Uh, so I just put a number there. It's, it's not to be in, intended that this is my tax basis, but you know, not too far away from it. Uh, it might in fact a little lower than this, but let's just say two hundred thousand um, dollars per million is my tax basis. So in BTC, that's sort of like saying that all my BTC was bought at thirteen thousand four hundred, right? And I'm going to look at first of all, I'm going to look at zero percent tax rate, and then I'm going to look at rebalancing sort of at a certain fixed interval. So if I look here and I just look at the power law, what does it say? Well, it says Kind of my multiplier at the very end says, okay, you're going to go from 67 to 96,000 to 135,000 to 185,000 to 251,000. So four years from now, this is for time zero, one, two, three, four. And time in four years from now, we're going to be at a quarter million. Now you may say, Fred, you're too bearish. We're going to get there next week, uh, and and you may be right, right? But this is the, what the power law sort of trend line is, right? And then from there, uh, I have a rebalancing technique that I basically use uh, whatever percentage here. And let's just put the number at sixty percent. Just put the number there, so sixty percent. And you'll see, it, I just kept the percentage of BTC at 60%, right? Now, when I do, in this particular case, as Bitcoin is just going up, I'm going to be selling Bitcoin every year. Uh, so, I started out at 60% Bitcoin, right? And um, I'm going to be, uh, uh, which means that I'm going to have you know, almost nine, nine Bitcoin to start. And then I'm going to start reducing that nine Bitcoin to eight Bitcoin to seven Bitcoin to six Bitcoin to five point seven Bitcoin. Okay, so basically I've sold off my Bitcoin uh, over the year, and that's sort of part of my rebalancing. So in terms of 
money in the system, I always have 60% in Bitcoin. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's that. And if I look here and I go, okay, great. So I, if I start up with 60% and I have 0% cap rates, I'm going to make roughly three times my money in the four years, which is, I know everybody wants it to be great, but this is, this is a great number, right? If you get three times their money in four years. Now, uh, and this is, you know, sort of fully kind of after tax and everything else. Right, I'm sorry. This is 2.42. The the particular month won't quite 2.42. Now, now let's look at a very volatile situation, right? So I'm going to say we're going to end up at the same place, 251,758 uh, Bitcoin. But in the process, we're going to go all the way up to say, let me make this more. Well, this is not bad. We're going to go up to 268 next. Next, in a year from now, we're going to just skyrocket, and we're going to crash 50%, and we're going to slowly make our way back up, right? So this is sort of a traditional cycle. We, you know, we did did what we did amazingly in up until May, and then we crashed sometime afterwards, or maybe a little bit before. But yeah, that's the price a year from now, and, uh, and then we make it back to 251,000. Well. In this scenario, right, uh, I, I benefit a lot from this, right, because I'm sort of selling here. I start with eight Bitcoin, now I go down to six Bitcoin, so, and then I bring my Bitcoin back up to eight, and then I sell to 7.6. So the second scenario versus the first actually does a little bit better, right? So instead of doing 2.4 times your money, you do 2.9. This is a little bit surprising to me. I would have thought I do. I do, I do more, right? I would have thought, okay, by timing this market and stuff, I do more. But the reality is you're still 60% invested, so I guess it shouldn't surprise you too much. Uh, but And this is sort of, you know, at 0% capital gain tax rate. Now let's look at it at 30% capital, right? So we know that federal capital gains is is uh, 20%, but let's say you're living in a place like me, like California, you have another 10% or so state tax to pay. Well now, I'm getting 1.87 from this versus 2.2. I mean, it's better, but it's not that much better. So, you know, in this particular case, you know, uh, it, it, it really is not helping you out that much. Now, again, just to put two there and put 100% here, I'm at 2.6. So, you know, again, the, the 2.6 versus, you know, if I'm 50, 60% weighted at 2.6, so I get 2.2. So I, can, I don't need to be 100% invested, right? If I'm if I'm 60% invested, I get 80% of the, the results, right? I don't need to be 100% because I, this volatility plays into the second thing. And that's what I was saying in the previous um, thing. So you don't need to be 100% invested. Don't really hurt, right? If you believe that this stuff's going to happen, then great. Uh, I also think that psychologically, you're going to probably not crack. If this is a, you're gonna feel better, right? You're 60% invested, and let's just look back at the scenario. You're 60% invested, and uh, you know Bitcoin goes all the way to 268. Well, you know what? You sold, um, you sold $700,000 worth of Bitcoin in, in that year. You're you're feeling pretty good, you know, about the uh, about yourself. You started with a million. You took seven hundred thousand dollars off the table in year in one year from now, and yeah, you're gonna feel some pain the next the next year, but it won't be nearly as bad psychologically. So yeah, anyway, so that's that's basically my analysis of the tax situation, and uh, you know. I think in general hodling is the, is is the best way, but I wouldn't get too religious about it. I don't. I think also 
the rebalancing with the 60 or 60, 70 percent kind of threshold probably makes sense for a lot of people. So that's it, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.